Hey Tim, what do you got? Oh, it's Yankee. Oh. Are you here to steal the rest of my quarters or what? Hey everyone, thanks for watching Yankee Stacking. And don't forget to hit the like on this video. I can't thank you enough for that. So, in a few minutes, I'll be paying up for these cull circulated, ugly looking silver eagles. If you remember, Tim asked me to poll you in the community for a fair price to pay for these things. Look, look at this. That is just disgusting. Uh, and you responded with a, uh, a healthy mix of comments, helpful prices, uh, some of which were quite hilarious. And there were some of you that expressed genuine concern for Tim over my on-site hijinks. Okay, I'll touch on that in a moment. I came up with a rough average of $35 for each of these Silver Eagles, so 210 total. Not exactly the bargain I usually get, but well worth the price. In fact, not enough. Tim is a fantastic local coin shop dealer. He is a wealth of never-ending knowledge, right? But most importantly, he's a true friend, someone I care for very deeply and have grown to know personally while the camera is off even in my home with my family. I also have loved the entertainment he provides on the channel. And yeah, if you've watched him for a while, I think you've seen how comfortable he's become in front of the camera. And he puts up with my lame directing and even follows some scripted ideas that I have. And yeah, <laughs> there's some of that in there, folks, including the pre-approved purchase of some silver quarters outside his shop. Just saying, okay? So hopefully what I paid Tim for these eagles reflect my appreciation of him. And yours too, actually. I love buying my precious metals from Tim. In fact, a local coin shop remains my first choice in building my gold and silver stack. However, I also buy online, and I know many of you do as well. In fact, I got these cull silver eagles online. I only paid a few bucks over spot for them and they are much nicer to look at. In fact, look at that. They are 2021s. Wow, man, that's pretty good. So yeah, and uh, that brings me to a super exciting announcement. SD Bullion will be sponsoring my channel. And I could not be more pleased to have their support. SD Bullion has many things I look for in an online bullion dealer. Trust being a big one. It's the same trust I get with Tim locally. And there are other things about SD Bullion that I love, but I'll cover them in later videos. We need to get to Tim in this one. But I only mention that now because you're going to see an ad for SD Bullion later in the video. So I'm just giving you a heads up, okay? Local first, online second. Okay, that's how I roll. So check out both Tim's info and my sdbullion.com link in the description of this video. And remember, Tim doesn't have an online store. Frankly, he doesn't want one. SDBullion.com obviously does, and they are absolutely phenomenal. Hey, Tim, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. You're <laughs> yourself. Um, I'm, I'm happy because you let me into the, the store. I thought you came here to steal the rest of my quarters. All right. Okay, so let's, let's can we just do the elephant in the room right now? Yeah. These are absolutely disgusting, yet incredibly beautiful American silver eagles that you let me walk out of your store with the last time. Nicely okay. toned. I do remember. You do remember that, right? Yeah. All scratched up. <laughs> okay, so you asked about consensus. That was a challenge to get consensus. There were extremes. Some were saying, since I help your business grow and advertise for you, blah, 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 whatever, you should give it to me for free. So we're gonna throw that right out the window, right? 
Then there were some that were saying a million dollars. I bet there were more of those. Than the... <laughs> Tell them you weren't really angry at me. <laughs> I'm never angry with you. I can't, thank you. I do want to. I do want to square Except this. When you with... chase my customers away. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's see. They don't come here to see a big production like you know. Yankee Stacking is a very big production. You know, hundreds of thousands of followers. So, has that been helpful to you? It's been very helpful. Good. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah, the phone never stops ringing. So when I went through the comments, I would say the average was around thirty-five dollars for Eagle, maybe forty, somewhere around there for the mm -hmm. six of them. Um, so what I'd like to do is give you the Yankee quarters that I got from Geezer for twenty dollars face. Okay. okay, and I'd like to give them as payment. So that's uh, that forty face. That is forty face. What do you think? Paid up eight hundred bucks. You think? Oh, Will that do? Them. All right, let me sweeten the deal. All right, now hold on, hold, 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 hold on, hold. All right, you can sell them. All right, but whoever buys them gets a Yankee sticker. How's that? Sounds like a good deal. Okay, they got to buy at least a tube. No, br don't break those up. Okay. That's fine. All right, cool. I'll even keep the advertising on there. Oh, yeah. Stick it right. Yeah, leave those Yankees right on there, man. I think it, if that works for you, it works for me. Works. I, I really That's appreciate fine. what you do for my channel. I really appreciate you uh, for what you do for your I see customers. you're keeping the... Uh, the uh... <laughs> I'm keeping these. You really love those tone ones, don't you? Oh, oh they're my favorite, Tim. Actually, we'll see. I might. They, they may end up in the community. We'll see. So, all right. So, anyways... Those are yours, and I, and I really do That's appreciate a, it. a terrific deal. Much better than I expected. We were talking on the phone. You had someone else drive up from New Jersey. Yeah. They saw me, uh, saw you on my channel and sold you stuff, right? Yes. And lives not very far from when I, when I lived in New Jersey, which was a short period of time. Uh, not very far from that. We, we discussed some of the same things that we were going through, including the drive which I made many times down in New Jersey from New Hampshire. Um, yeah, good people. And um, I'm, I'm glad they came. I think they got a good deal. Good. And um, I hope they come back. All right. What did you pick up today? Um, a bunch of oddball 10 ounce, a lot of one ounce. I think I cleaned them out of the one ounce. And um, buffaloes. I know they still have more buffaloes, but I picked up another 400 uh, pieces. And um, let's see what else. I have a 2021 Type 2 Monster Box, uh, which is, you know, that's very saleable because people, when they, when they ask me for, you know, rolls, they want either 2021 Type 2 or mm -hmm. 22. Mm -hmm. And the 22 price has just gone out of sight. And the availability is not good. And then I was trying to find some more uh, Maple Leafs. 2022 Maple Leafs, they are gone. And the delivery is now being quoted at June. You know, I did a little survey on my site. Are you seeing your local coin shop dealer or online um, dealers having issue with their stock? And 50% said yes. I thought it was actually going to be a little higher than that. Well, yeah, where are the guys who are not having no trouble with stock? Down in Florida, seems to have stock they seem to have whatever they need right talk to um a local coin shop dealer jcs gold uh talked to chris luck down in virginia he said it's getting very hard to source gold and silver in general silver monster boxes are about a month out for delivery if we can even get them gold is not quite as bad as silver but still tighter and silver rounds are tough too used to be able to get silver town mason mint sunshine rounds all we can get now is straight generics North, uh, North New Jersey seemed to be fine, but New England checked around here. It's tough. So I don't know if this is a regional issue or what. It's interesting. For some things it probably is, but we're we're close, and the distributors for the Canadian Mint are close, and we're just they, they deliver their delivery dates. Their quotings are ridiculous. Um, you know, considering the fact they've been so good over the last couple of years. You know, Canadian Mint has been very efficient. They've been getting whatever 
whatever quantity you want has been available and it's not anymore. The Comex. I saw this just today and I think it's absolutely fascinating. It says that March silver has the largest adjustment in data records ever between preliminary and final. It was 50 times larger than average, equaling uh, a 28 standard deviation, which is huge. That is big. March has the largest delivery for a minor month ever. May is the highest open interest ever at this point in the contract. It's also the highest at any point for any minor month in recent memory. And June shows the same trends as May, and that's a major month. What is going on with the COMEX? I'd like to know what the, by statute, what their uh, reserve uh, requirements are. Do you have any idea? I don't know. I got a guy behind me nodding his head. Exactly. I agree with that. I, I don't know what the reserve. They're obviously still selling contracts. And how much physical silver actually is behind those contracts? China and Russia that are working out their own trade settlements. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, China's been courting Saudi Arabia so that they can, you know, sell their oil for yuan or for rubles. And, uh, you know, that's going to that's gonna spread. That's going to spread around the world, which will leave the dollar kind of out in the cold as the reserve currency. I, I, you know, you know, the situation in South America is desperate because all those economies in South America have been resetting their currency. And, you know, when they can't afford to pay the debt, everything, they reset the currency. As a result of doing that, six times since 1942, Brazil's accumulated inflation rate is 2.75 sextillion times what it was in 1942. So basically, every time they reset the currency, they divide the current currency by a thousand. And they've done that six times. Um, so, you know, technically that currency is worthless. But uh, during the Depression, uh, they did something similar in the Soviet Union. So the ruble is technically worthless. And then you take the European Union, which was, um, you know, the Euro was founded on nothing because they had no vehicle on their constitution for the individual states to pay down their debt. So all they've done since 2002 is accumulate debt. It was what June 30th, 2002, when the euro uh, was came into effect to for all the then, then current members of uh, the European Union, and I think Spain was maybe you know three or four hundred billion. Now there's their debts like one and a half trillion. And same thing for Italy. It's, you know, all the Mediterranean countries are are drowning in debt because they have no way of paying the debt down. And I, I believe the ECB is the only vehicle that can issue bonds. Um, and I remember years ago, there was something about them issuing a, um, bonds for Spain specifically. I don't believe anybody would buy them because they, they, they have no way of pay, paying their debt down their debt. In this country, people still buy U.S. Treasuries because we, for some reason, have promised to pay out our debt. And as the world's reserve currency, you know, we're supposed to stick to that. Hmm. Whether or not that ever happens, um, it may under a digital currency, right? We may pay down our debt. Alan Greenspan said that he could pay off all the retirement benefits needed. He can guarantee all that, but can't guarantee what it will be worth. And we can guarantee cash benefits it's far out and at whatever size you like, but we cannot guarantee their purchasing power. Yeah, well, we're seeing a little bit of that now, you know, and um, the only economist that I talked to, a friend of mine and customer, um, when I said, okay, if inflation is really between 15 and 20%, what will the government post? And he said, probably 8%. And the last posting was what, 7.9%? If you go to uh, John Williams' shadow stats. Shadow stats, yeah. yeah. So the, what's the true rate? Is it between 15 right and 20%? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, well, that was back in December, 15.1. Mm -hmm. I yeah. haven't gone on since then. It's probably so. at least 17 or 18. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're playing all kinds of games with that. 
Yeah, but the, you know, it's, you know, look, look at our debt. Our, look at our unfunded liabilities. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely crazy. Mm -hmm. And um, the only way out is a digital currency. That's the bad news because that kills everybody who's not part of the ruling elite. Um, you know, in, in Russia and Ukraine, they call them oligarchs. What's the difference? What's the difference? What, what are billionaires in this country? Same thing. Mm. And, um, you know, how, what is a billionaire pay in taxes? Well, you take his salary, his salary is equal to his expenses. So he probably doesn't pay much. And where's the wealth? The wealth is in accumulated assets. Uh, that can't go on forever. And, you know, the people who are uh, right now taking government benefits, uh, are the benefits keeping up with inflation? Not even close. And, you know, it's, you know, we're, we're in for a rude awakening at some point. And, but it's all simple math. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to figure out what's going on. And I think it was Paulson, right? Didn't he start the TARP program? Wasn't that TARP, his, yeah. his uh, contrivance? Um, it, what's different between now and uh, 2008, the same dynamics are at play. You know, the people are taking huge mortgages. Um, and, you know, the paper is all going back to what Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac being bundled. Mortgage-backed securities. But, yeah, today they're starting with the TARP program rather than ending with the TARP program. And it's not going to make, take too many people who realize that the house that they paid, you know, five and $600,000 for, you can't resell at that, that price um, to cause a real collapse of the market. And, you know, it's... How is this being reflected in um, physical silver and gold? The availability is terrible. And... Um, you know, I don't mind waiting for a month for something if I know I'm going to get it. That's the problem. And um, that's not, hasn't always been the case. They are at 3850 okay. Still. Still. What's the price going to be in two days? Four. <laughs> it's your yeah, it'll be up around 40 Yeah, just because if you're, you know, one of the big guys selling online and, you know, I'm a lot smaller than they are. Um, I probably have the same number of customers, <laughs> but if they can't predict when they're going to receive replacements for what they're selling, they've got to raise the price. Otherwise, you know, all these companies will merge into one. Hey, how are these selling? Uh, we sold the Sonic one. The Sonic's gone? The Sonic one's gone. All right. They'll be going more. And you did get some other stuff too, like... Um, can I see what you got? Get ready for SD Bullion's Monster Box Sweepstakes that includes 500 Silver Eagles. You could be the next lucky recipient of a phone call like this. This is Dr. Tyler Wall, CEO of SD Bullion. Well, I'm calling you to let you know that you won the SD Bullion giveaway of a Monster Box of Silver Eagles. So click the link below for your chance to win. Hundreds of one ounce bars. Okay, cool. And no gotta, five ounce though gotta, yet, right? No, and I'm I'm trying to hide the ten ounce from my next customer. <laughs> He's right behind me. He <laughs> wants most of them. I have to send to a customer before they start calling the police. Oh, gee. okay. They've waited so long for their shipment. Um, but you're and you've got the Type Two Monster Boxes. The I Monster have a Box. Twenty Twenty One Type Two, and I have a Twenty Two Two Monster Box left. Yeah. How about the Canadian Maple Leaf Monster Box? Do you you did get that I did Friday, get that and you know I opened it up, and immediately about one fifth of it is gone. I mean, you know, like within minutes. This just came in, right? Yeah, some of them are really good. I mean, this this one, one of my favorites. Well, that's beautiful. Okay, so commemoratives, yeah. D Day. Yeah. I think most of us have a military theme. Very cool. Here's the, um, Korea. Oh, here's a here's one. This is, like, this is San Francisco Mint. In 1906, the San Francisco Mint was robbed, and um, they lost lots and lots of twenty dollar gold pieces. 
Yeah. And then you so, better love And there was uh, a yeah. couple yeah. was yeah. out in the woods and yeah. they yeah. dug up a yep. tin or a coffee can or something that was full of $20 gold pieces. And everybody was convinced that they came from that robbery. Yes, um, I read about this. But they, they had them certified and um, I guess the what they did was they mixed some later dates in with the, <laughs> so it didn't look like it came from 1906. So what about gold, Tim? I what see this. Well, I see the gold over here. There's some still available. Oh, but I man. think that's only because they had it on a reserve. It may have ten gold eagles there, and uh, so these are spoken for. Anybody. Well, uh, I have a lot more that they put aside for me, but I believe all the rest of them are spoken for, and I, I may have half of these maybe gone this afternoon. Uh, of all the good people I talked to all day long and the phone rings all day and I get to talk to some of the nicest, smartest people in America. They're all followers of your channel. And I think everybody should subscribe because then they, they get priority treatment, don't they? <laughs> They'll definitely see when the next Tim video pops up. So thank you so much for saying that. I appreciate it.